In today's show, we're talking about Flow and Teams integration. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how good old Power Automate and Microsoft Teams play together. There's so many little touch points. So we're going to talk about things like for selected message triggers, adaptive cards. We're going to look at posting messages, replying to messages, how we would do that as the flow bot as well. So you understand how that plays in the picture and just try to help you guys start to better wrap your heads around all the way these two work together. And then we'll be able to make more complicated videos in the future because we have this base one. So let's get started. But before we do that, first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about Teams and Flow integration. So the fun thing here is that really Microsoft Teams is kind of becoming more and more omnipresent in your Office 365 light, right? That's a fancy way of saying all of a sudden you find that it became the center of your universe. A little bit because you keep having all these remote meetings across it, but a lot of times in cases like our small business, instead of everything being back and forth amongst the team and email, we have switched completely to Everything we do is in Teams. And so not only are we, you know, chatting with each other back and forth in Teams, but now we've started to automate business solutions. So like when we get help desk requests in, they go into Teams and then Teams sends it out to the assigned person for that day. And a lot of that different pieces of it, we're seeing that we're facilitating all via Teams. So this is the second video in a series of, you know, how Microsoft uh, Power Platform can make Teams better. So last week we did introduction to Power Apps and Teams. This week we're going to do introduction to uh, Power Automate and Teams. And then what we'll do is once we get this one done, right? This is the last one. It's intros I have to do. I've got some crazy ideas for the next video. But today we're going to just focus on those little things. You know, how are the connectors work? What is the trigger? What are the actions that are available? And I'll show you some working examples of that. As a matter of fact, let's switch over to my desktop and I'll show you one of the examples we're going to build today. Before we switch over to desktop, one more quick thought. I just finished production of the whole shebang and I realized that the video got to be pretty long. So I just want to give you a heads up that if all you really care about is the high level stuff, that ends at about the 15 minute mark. But then the next 20 minutes or so after that, that is the deep dive into building the solution I'm about to demo for you. So I just want to give you guys that perspective if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want to commit to this mega long video. Okay, so over here on my desktop, let's take a look at the main flow that we're going to build. And so what you're going to see here is Chewy posted earlier in our team's channel, hey, you ugly cat named Ferguson Ducat, buy me something nice to make up for tearing up my favorite squeaky toy. And so you can see up here by the image, we're logged in as Ferguson right now. And so Ferguson wants to get approval to spend money, right? Got my dogs and cats on budgets. So Ferguson will go up here and say more options and then more actions. And then there is a flow that we have built called how much can I spend on Chewy, right? We have to spend so much on the dog that we had to build an automated process. And so what happens when we press this is Ferguson's going to get an adaptive card that comes up and says, oh, look at the pretty face. How much do you want to spend on Chewy? And so you can see Chewy wrote the flow because it defaults to $1,000. So we're going to say more like $30.50. So when Ferguson submits that, now what happens is I am the approver of the budget. So I got a Teams chat. So the Teams client here, as you can see by the picture, is logged in as me. And so the Flow bot posted a chat to me. And so that uh, chat, right, came from Flow. And it says, do you want to approve spending $30.50 on Chewy? And you can tell that it came from Ferguson, the cat. So we'll say, I approve. And so then when I approve this, what happens, right, I get thanks for the feedback. We minimize this. And you see this back here post, Shane said, yes, you can spend $30.50. So Ferguson knows that he is off spending money now. So there you go. That's what we're going to work towards, right? We're going to kind of build a some form of that along the way. But what I really want you guys to start to understand is this idea that there's so many pieces that go and connect that we can start building really neat things. So let's get started. And we're going to do all these demos as Ferguson today because my team's client and Chewy's team's clients are both, um, they're doing some stuff you're not ready to see yet. So we're not going to mess with that. We're going to spend all of our time over here as Ferguson. So what Ferguson's first going to do is go into flow and my flows. Now he could have, if he wanted over here in teams, Ferguson could have said, Hey, I want to just add flow into, um, here. And so then we'd say add, and so then flow would show up as a tab inside the Teams channel. Um, I don't know, I because I'm a 
power apps and flowy person, I don't think of it this way, but if you wanted to have it all truly embedded right here so you didn't have to leave, totally could, uh, but we're not gonna do that because I don't know, because I don't like that. So I went to flow.microsoft.com to get to it, but however you want to get here, it'll work the same. So then over here, what we want to do is we're going to say new, and let's just say uh, it doesn't matter. Any of these will do instant, and I'm going to skip this because this tries to make your life simpler. I don't want simple. I want to show you guys stuff. And so right here, you can see that you have a trigger for Teams. And if you're new to it, right, the idea of a trigger is that triggers are the ability to, um, they're what tells your flow to wake up. Flow, go do your thing. So what is the thing that tells this flow it's time to leap into action and help us out? And so here you can see I've got some different options. When a new channel message is added. So if you were watching carefully over here, you may have noticed when we were in the Teams that all of a sudden this message that showed up said, no, Chewy, you just ate five minutes ago. So this is another flow that I forgot I had running, quite frankly, until it popped up on the screen. But um, So what this flow does is anytime a new message is added in a channel, it just replies. So that's one thing you can do. You can set up auto replies and they might be auto replies in that case. The channel I tied it to was, you know, feed Chewy and the answer is no, don't feed Chewy. So you could kind of set automatic replies or triggers or maybe every time somebody logs messages into a channel, you also want to generate an email or log it to SharePoint. You know, I don't know what your business process is, but you can trigger off of when a new channel is added or sorry, when a new message is added to a channel. But you can also, then we're gonna do this for a selected message. And this is the most powerful one to me, the one that has the most benefit to me, so that's where I'm gonna spend the most time on it. But this is where you just saw that idea that you can go in here and any channel, this was confusing to me at first, but any channel I want, I can just be like, oh yeah, this message right here, hit the ellipses, more actions, and there are my flows that I have tied to it. So that's pretty awesome, right? Because I was afraid I have to write this once per channel, and that is not the case. And if you're not used to the uh, team's terminology, just remember that this thing, so playing and training, those are actual teams. And then within a team, you have multiple channels. So general, afternoon, demo, ask Shane, and made this with Power Apps. These are my channels. So hopefully you kind of have that uh, already, but just so you know. So when we create things from this trigger, we, uh, we're just saying, hey, make this available. And it's gonna put it out there for me everywhere. So that's pretty powerful. Um, then I can also have other ones when I ma mess it, ma ugh, when I mentioned, easy for me to say, so many M words. When I mention in a channel message, so if someone tags me, maybe I wanna have a certain response that says like, go away. Sounds like something I would do, quite frankly. Um, but you have the ability to action only on messages. But keep in mind, that's tied to a specific channel. So you'd have to have that in different channels. Um, then you can have when a new team member is added or when a team member is removed. So this would be, maybe you have different like welcome things you wanted to have happen. So maybe every time someone new gets added to your channel, you want to send them, here's the FAQ, here's my policy, here's the spending limit for Chewy, right? You want to notify them of all the different things that are going on. That could be a good one. Or when someone gets removed, I, I haven't really thought about where I would use that. I don't. I don't think about people ever getting removed to channels because we're always hiring. I don't know, but you have it available to you if it comes up as a, a need you have. So let's just jump into my favorite for a selected message. So over here, now when you get dropped in here, you're gonna get this thing called create an adaptive card. And so we're gonna look at that in a minute, but that was the thing that popped up, right? Remember when we were over here and we did this and we said, oh my goodness, I can't click. So when we did this, and that's an adaptive card. That's what we call this thing that's on the screen right now. So and we're able to build and design those ourselves. And so this week we're gonna take a look at basics of those. Next week we're gonna do some fun stuff with those. Uh, so there you go. So over here, but also keep in mind that if you're not ready to do adaptive cards, you don't have to. So I can just say for a selected message and ignore all this other stuff. Show advanced options, how big is it? I don't care, go away. So then, all right, so that's our trigger. Someone selects the message. What do I wanna do? What can I do? So we're gonna say new step. And as always, I always start with Outlook when I'm trying to explore a new one. And the reason for that, we're just gonna send an email. The reason that I always start with Outlook is because I understand how email works, right? So if you started with, oh, I'm gonna immediately post it to another Teams channel, then you gotta understand more new things at once. I try to only understand one thing at a time. I'm kinda of slow that way. That's okay. So I'm just gonna send myself an email. And for the subject, I'm just going to say, you know what? Um, 
Well, let's go over here and look. So over here on the right, we're going to see that I have no idea why teams just dung, but whatever. I think it was to do that dung. Whatever. Something dung. I apologize. Um, so here you can see all the different uh, dynamic content we have available. So for a selected message, remember that was our trigger. What are the different things we have available? So we've got message IDs, we've got sender IDs, we've got plain text message, subjects, link to messages, the team ID, right? So that's the team that came out, the channel ID, the message ID was up here, that's good. Who, who did it? So lots of different things. All right, so, well, the subject, the email, let's make that the message subject. So there you go. So then down here in the body, I'm just going to start with a simple message content. And I can either do message content, which would be the formatted version, or if you weren't using a data source that could handle the formatting, then just for the plain text. We'll just take the message content. Cool. So for me, that's enough to test. So I'm going to say, uh, give you this thing a name. We'll call this video flow. I don't know. I'm not feeling creative with names. We'll say save. And so now that this is saving off, and it's done. Now we should be able to go back over here. And remember, Ferguson created this. So Ferguson has the ability to go over here and just select this uh, message right here. Hey, Ferguson the cat. There you go. Choose this one. More actions. And video flow. Now, I have heard that it can take up to five minutes for these to show up. It has never taken that long for me. But just in case you guys create one and that's your trigger and you don't see it instantly, wait five minutes before you get angry. Okay, and just go get a drink or something. So there's my video flow. We'll click on that. And so we didn't do anything with adaptive cards, right? So it didn't have to prompt me. It just said your flow ran. Cool. So then now I should get an email. But I know I'm not going to get an email, so let's go figure out why, right? My email didn't show up. I, I know this. Go back over here to my flow. So let's go to flow. Say OK. And it failed, right? Now I'm going to break a few things on purpose here because these were the errors I ran into when I was learning all this. So if you click on this, what it's going to tell us is that the subject cannot be null. But remember, we put this to be the message subject. So why does it think that's null? Well, let's go back again, say OK. So this is why it's always important to run these things. And so then go up here and click on for selected message. And if you look in the outputs, if we were to go through here, do, 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 somewhere in here, subject is blank. So in Teams messages, it's possible to add a subject, but a lot of times it's like 99.999% of the time, they don't have one. So in this case, that's not a very good uh, piece for me because when it came through blank, it broke Outlook. So what did I do when I was ran into that? I'd be like, I'd go right here and it'd be like, the message subject was, and then put that there. So that way there was some text there in case the subject came blank. And you could write a condition and say, hey, if the message subject is blank, then do X or Y. But like I said, most always it's going to be blank. So you probably don't want to include that in your output. But it's good to know it's there. And so then while we're here, let's just go ahead and add some other things. So another thing that I did was I wanted just to kind of see some of this stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, what does a team ID look like? Like that. And then I said, what does a channel ID look like? And then I grabbed the channel ID. And then finally... What does the link uh, look like? And so then link to message. So I just wanted to kind of see these. And Outlook's an easy way for me to see kind of what's happening. So now we'll just say save again. And then remember, there's no reason to go back to Teams. So we're just going to say test and then say grab our failed test. No big deal. Because all the test is, button's doing is doing the trigger again for us. So I didn't have to switch tabs to go do that. So this is going. There's our email. Let me open the email. Let's look at it together. Cool, so we can see that I got an email from Ferguson to Cat. You can see that this is the body. Look, the subject was blank, but because we put that extra text up there, we didn't have to worry about the subject actually being blank. And then it gets a team ID, a channel ID, and a link. And so then I bet you a dollar if I click on this link, it will take me in the browser. Oh, nope. It took me, it launched my Teams client, because I knew I had the Teams client, and it took me to that message directly. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we kind of understand how that works. Nice, nice, nice. Now, the next thing I was like, hey, well, how do I get this team ID to turn into the team name? So what I did, is I went over here. I'm like, all right, well, let's go look at the Teams actions. So I'm going to click on Add an Action. I'm going to click on Teams. 
And so look at this, there is a whole bunch of these things. Add members, get messages, post options, post, post, post. Create a channel, nice, we can create channels, so maybe we need to make some automation, It'd be good to know. You can at mention people, you can get a team. Ah, that's the one we probably want, we'll come back to that in a second. I can list the different channels, list my different teams. Remember, this is a lot like we did in the Power Apps last week. And then we have all these different posting options we're gonna talk more about. But so what I wanted to do is I wanted to get my team. And so they like, hey, what's your team ID? And I'm like, all right, well, nope, I don't want any of those. I'm gonna say enter my custom value. And for my selected message, plug in the team ID. So that should get the team. So then now down here, my email, what would I do? I'm like, all right, team ID. And then we should be able to say team name. And then if we scroll down over here from get a team, there's the display name. Ha ha, I bet you know exactly what's about to happen. So we'll say save. And then we'll do test and then test again, save a test. And just long enough for me to get a drink, it has sent another email. And so I should be able to click on that email right here. And so then now we get the team name back. So, right, this is that whole idea with flow. Sometimes you have to add an extra step to get all the information you want. We run into that with SharePoint all the time. So. That was how I got the team name. Now the next thing I wanted to get was the channel name and it turns out there is not a get channel thing, boo. So I started to mess around with it and I decided I did not want to get down that rabbit hole with you guys, but one, what I was going to do, so if you want to go solve this problem for me or if you find a better way, leave a comment below and tell me how to do it better. But what I was going to do was um, get so list channels and so then I was gonna list channels for our same team again, All right? So there's our, oh, I can use that team ID as well. And so then that would have given me back a array of all of the different uh, channels. And so it would have had their name and their ID, and so I would have had to find the one that matches, but that was like playing with arrays and ooh, that was way off topic. So that's how you would do it if you're really interested in how you'd get the channel name back, but we're not gonna mess with that today. So get out of there. So let's talk about other things we can do now though, right? So we figured out how to trigger off a selected message. We've gotten a team, not super exciting, but we got it. So let's do another step. So one of the things I wanted to do is I want to talk about posting messages. So when it comes to posting messages, there's two ways that you can post messages. You can either do it as yourself, right? The flow runner, creator, whatever, flow connector, I don't know what you call me, but the flow runner, or you can do it as Flowbot. And so the difference is, is over here, remember when I got the uh, the chat popping up, you know, in my chat here, did I want it to come from Flow or did I want it to come from Ferguson? And so um, typically speaking, like on these adaptive card ones where I want a response, you're gonna have that done as Flowbot. And you'll see that here. So post a choice option as the Flow, right? this is just code for adaptive card to the users that does this Flowbot. Um, post a message, so this is posting into a regular Teams channel. Post a reply to a message, Ooh, we'll do that in a second, that sounds fun. Post an adaptive card to a Teams user and wait for a response. So this would have post a card as me the flow runner. Uh, we're not worried about creating any of these channels anymore. So then we have post a message as Flowbot to the channel, post a message as a Flowbot to a user, because a lot of times that's what you guys want. You don't want things to be tied to you. You want it just to be the magical Flowbot. So these are the options you have to do those types of things. Post an adaptive card to a Teams channel and wait for a response. So it doesn't say Flowbot, so that would happen as me. Post your own adaptive card and then post again. So let's just post a simple, um, now let's get into adaptive cards a little bit. So we kind of see that a lot of this messaging stuff is really about interactivity. And to do that, we need adaptive cards. So let's get out of here for a second. And so let's go back up here to the four selected message and let's create an adaptive card. So now keep in mind with this create adaptive card, yours might look a little bit different. I feel like every time I go in here, Microsoft's kind of changed it a little bit. So that's okay. Just, you know, be, be brave because conceptually it's all gonna stay the same because the format, the schema, is really the same. So I have this create adaptive a card button. And so then up here what happens is they load a whole different adaptive card editor. Woohoo! You can see that it's already set up in my case for teams, but you have different options. Oh, no, this one you just have teams. And you can do a preview mode. And so the easiest thing for me to do here, like I got really overwhelmed because there was stuff here, is I just clicked on new card. And then I didn't want any of these pre-built cards because once again, they overwhelmed me. So I'm like blank card. 
whew, feel better, right? All right. So now that I have a blank card, I can be like, hey, I want to throw some text out there. So maybe I want a text block. Whoop. Throw a text box up here. And then I can just be like, all right, cool. Um, how much did you want to spend, right? That was what we did. Earlier. How much do you want to spend? So we just put it over here in the little property box and we've got text over here. There's different things in the controls here that are going to um, help you style this. You don't have to mess with any of this, right? But maybe we want to make it like, hey, I want it to be a larger font and I want it to be bolder. And so then now, you know, if we do preview mode, oh, well, looks like nothing happens with that one. All right. No, well, that's good to know. So then what we might do is be like, all right, well, what about if I brought a rich text block over? I'm going to get preview mode to turn off. Bring this one over. And so with a rich text block, we're like, all right, oh, with this one, you actually have to use the payload editor. So what is the payload editor? So down here at the bottom, card payload editor, this is the JSON that it is generating for you. And so you can see there's my text block to basically completely ignore all this size stuff. So but interestingly enough, we're going to copy this and we're going to go down here and be like, hey, new guy, remember you? What if I tell you that I want to do all of that stuff? Oh, look, he actually takes the different size options. So kind of weird that the one ignores it, but the other doesn't. Whatever, I'm not here to judge. But so you can play, you can manipulate the JSON directly down here. And so for some of them, like the rich text, you have to. Others, you can just completely ignore it. But no, we're not fretting with any of that right now, right? Let's get rid of that. So we have some text. Now we want to do a text input. And so for your text input, what you're going to do it's just going to pull this up here and say, all right, text input. Um, how do I, you know, what, what's going to go on here? Now, it warns you, all inputs must have a unique ID. So notice over here, they do not auto-generate IDs. So then for me, I just call this spend amount. I just made an ID name. So that's something we can reference later. I do not want any placeholder text. Bye-bye. And so then now we've got a text input. Or I probably should have done a number input. Fair enough. Delete that. Same deal. Drag this up here. And so, all right, well, we'll just call the spend amount again. I like that name. We'll get rid of the placeholder text. But now they can just put in numbers. I can set default values. Remember you saw in the demo, I did 1,000. You have minimum values, maximum values, lots of different things. And we're not going to get too deep into any of this today. So I just wanted to set up a simple one. But now that we've got this ID of spend amount and we've got this set up, I'm going to say, save my card. Oh, no, but we're going to go back in there. So say edit. So the other thing I had in the demo one was I had an image because I want to talk about this for a second with you guys. So my image up here, when you go to add an image, notice that it says, hey, what is the URL of your image? So it is not um, going to, you know, you can't upload an image or anything like that. You've got to have an URL. So I said, all right, cool. Let me go over here to SharePoint. Let's grab Chewy's face. And so I just copy this in and go over here. This is going to have a problem later, but shh, we're going to pretend like we don't know that's going to happen. So there you go. Oh, and then I'm going to change the size down here to be um, much smaller like that. And let's see, I'm going to set my alternate text picture of Chewy. Uh, you know what? I've been trying to do more with alternate text, just trying to make sure that my stuff is a little bit more accessible over time. So quick little words right there really helps my on a screen reader. So there you go. All right. So we've done this. So we'll just say save again. So then now our flow has gotten a little bit more complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm like, all right, so for a selected message, we're gonna take that input, we're gonna get a team. So we have the team name. And so then down here, what I wanna do is just in my email, because I like emails, um, we're going to do input. And so then we're gonna scroll over here. And so for a selected message, now we don't see our friend's spend amounts. Oh, that stinks. So sometimes I can search. Oh, look at that. Well, searching, found it. And so then there it shows up. The other thing that I found is sometimes if you save and come back out or go out and go back in, it'll show up. But usually just searching for it, it will do it. And sometimes I just write it myself because it's easier, but whatever. So there we go. We got some of that. So we're going to say save. Now this time though, because we want to provide that input, we are going to go back over here. We're going to click on our message again and say, hey, more actions and the video flow. 
And so this time, look at that. There's Chewie's pretty face. And then we say, how much do you want to spend? We want to spend $1,000. We'll say submit. And then that'll jump over. And then we should have an email in just a second. And there's our email with $1,000. Very nice, right? We have passed data. That's pretty powerful. Because now, now you've got the data in flow. You guys have got thousands and millions and zillions of flow skills. You can do whatever you want with that. But what you really want to do is you want to see how do we reply back, right? So new step, Teams again. And now we're just going to say, hey, I want to post a reply to a message. What is the team ID? So we're just going to say enter my custom value again. And we can, we'll just go right here. We'll just say team ID. And so for a selected message, the team ID, I could technically use this one, but you probably wouldn't really have that step. So I want to show you for a selected message. So then for channel ID, as you can probably guess, same type of thing, channel. And so then there you go, channel ID. And then message ID, I'm sure you've figured out the pattern by now. There's the message ID. So there you go, so that's what I wanna to reply to. That's the message we wanna to reply to. And what are we gonna reply with? How about we'll just give them back the amount. You said, and then over here what I might do is We'll just go over here and say spend amount again. There it is. So you said a thousand. Now it does bother me that that thousand is not showing up as currency, right? It's one of the first things you guys will complain about in the comments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to copy this thing. So if you highlight it, see that? Control C and I'm gonna get rid of it. Go to expressions and I'm going to say format number. And so then we're gonna do a little like that. And so then we're going to do a float because the number comes over as an integer and it needs, or I think it comes as an integer and it confuses the whole thing. So we're going to use, uh, turn it into a float number. And then I'm going to paste the stuff out of the clipboard. Oh, that is not what I wanted to paste. So we'll just say um, float 12 real quick. And then we're going to do a format with a single quote as a C, just like that. And so say, okay. So then that would do the formatting, but that's not, that's just formatting the number 12 right now. So then I'd have to go back up here again. Let's try this again. Let's try this a second time. Spin, oh, nope, there's spin them out. So we're gonna try and copy this. This is just flow being flow, right? You guys are probably used to that by now. Let's try this, control copy, get rid of that again. So now we have this format working. We'd go back in here, but now it doesn't wanna let you click on it. More flow. Oh, is not the nicest friend. Format number. And so then what is the number I want to format? Let's paste again. There's our input. It's got weird curly braces around it though. So we're going to pull those out. And don't worry, when I get this formula finished, I'm going to put this in an easier place for you guys to read it. So then that would do that, but we know we got to wrap that in float. Okay, so that wrapped all that in float. And then now this, we're using the .NET format of C, which is currency. We'll say control A, control C again, say okay. Oh my goodness, it lost my formula. Let's try this again. Who wants to scream at flow? Flow, flow, come on, get it together. Third time's a charm. And so now that we've got that and that works, what I want to do is I would just go up here and do a uh, add a comment and paste it in. So then that way you guys can easier see, right? But it's format number float. We got to turn that trigger, that amount that comes in into a float number. So a thousand into a thousand point zero zero with a bunch of zeros at the end. And then we're going to then apply the currency format, which is the, the zero or the dot zero zero, you know, the, the currency look. So now if we do a test and say save and test, and we didn't have to re-trigger it because I don't want to go type in anymore. Clearly typing is hard for me, so we wouldn't want to do that. But so then if we go back over here, there you go. It replied, you said $1,000. So we took the 1,000 input and turned it into an actual currency uh, thing. So a little bonus trick there for you. Okay, so that's, that's a lot of really cool stuff, right? So we've posted reply. So then the last piece of it you might have noticed was, that, or in the the demo, because we are just making this video the world's longest video, I don't know what to say. Um, we're gonna go back to Teams. 
So the other thing that we had did was we had posted an adaptive card to me, right? So scroll over here. So we're gonna post an adaptive card to a team user and wait for their response. So who do we wanna send it to? We're gonna send it to that Shane guy. There he is. What, uh, what is the message we want to send? So this is confusing. This is your adaptive card. This has to be JSON and they don't give you the JSON editor here. So I'm going to just put in, you know, text for the second, like literally the word text. Okay. And so then I'm going to hit save so I don't lose anything. But now I need to go generate this JSON. So what I've been doing is going up here to for selected message saying edit adaptive card. And then I'm going to say new card and then a blank card. I'm gonna make that new card of you know what I want it to be. So throw a text box real quick. You know, uh, do you approve spending? And then I did something like this, XXX on Chewy. Because I'm gonna to have to fill that in in just a second. So do you approve spending that much on Chewy? I do. And so then now what I need to do is I need to add an action set. And then in my action set, we're going to add a submit button. I'm gonna click on this button and I'm gonna change this button's title to be yes. And I'm going to, I need to set its ID. And I'm going to set its ID to yes also because we're gonna trigger off of that ID in a second because now I'm gonna click back in my action set, add a second button. We're gonna set this one to, um, oh, we gotta click on the button first. We're gonna set this one to no. I'm gonna set its ID to capital N-O like so. And so then that's going to give that prompt to Shane, hey, do you approve spending X or Y on, or XXX on Chewy? And so then I'm going to say copy card JSON, and then we're going to exit out of here, right? And because I just exit, I never saved, my Chewy adaptive card for my trigger is, is stayed put, but I use the adaptive card editor. <laughs> Sneaky. So then now you go down here, you get rid of the word text, and you paste in, and so that pulled in all the JSON for that adaptive card. Now, remember we had the XXX, right? Here we want to replace this with spend amount. So I'm going to delete it out. And then I'm going to say, hey, Flo, I want to use dynamic content. And then we're going to type in spend amount. There we go. And so if we go up here, now this is going to dynamically put in spend amount. And if you wanted to write that formula again, right? That took me like 17 tries, but you got the idea. We could have put that in here. Um, but yeah, so do you approve spending on that much on Chewy? And we're gonna get a yes and no. And let's let's just see what happens. So let's just send a message to Shane. So we're gonna say test. We're gonna say test succeeded, save and test. And so then now the testing process is running. In just a second, I'm expecting, we got the email, we're not worried about that, we know that works. But I got a little Teams message pop up. Hey, I got an adaptive card. Do you approve spending a thousand on Chewy? And I can say, yes, I do. Or maybe I say no, but so if so, I said yes or no, nothing happened, all right? So we probably need to figure out why that took place. But if we go back over here, we should see that, all right, this went forward, so that's good. So, so we're, we're moving along, we're doing okay. Now, if we go down here though, so now we want to make sure, um, we wanna put in the amount, or whether or not Shane said yes. So we could say something, and Shane said, and so then now we want to pull in dynamic content from our previous step, right? From the uh, the post action. So we want to get Shane's feedback. Now, if we go get a team for a selected message, wait, but our post adaptive card is not here. So this, I spent way too much time trying to understand what was happening here. And so what it was, was it was the fact that I got queued up here. Remember we put in the spend amount dynamically? So if we get this out of here, right? So we go back to just plain normal JSON, yay. So then now if we go back down here and say, oh, post an adaptive card. And so then now we can get the submit action ID. Remember a while ago, we named our button specifically. The action ID was yes or no. And I did that on purpose because now I want to see that exact wording in here. So if we do a, uh, oh, so, so now we put that in here. Now what I want to do is I want to go back up here. Did you approve spending on, and we'll just put spend amount, spend amount right back in here. There you go. So flow doesn't care because we've already used the dynamic content, but look, the dynamic content for post is gone. This really just confused me so much. So if we say test, and then if we do test again, what should happen is this time around when whatever button I click, we should either see yes or no 
based on the flow. So flow sent a card, there's my chat. If we say yes, and then if we switch back over here as Ferguson, Shane said yes. Oh wait, there, sorry, it's this Shane. You said a thousand dollars and Shane said yes. Ha ha! So that shows you how to figure out what uh, button the user pressed. And so like I said, next week we're gonna go into adaptive cards in a lot more detail, but I wanted you to at least have the basics here because I kind of gotten you wrapped around this demo. I also realize this video has gotten way too long. I apologize, but it's good stuff, I think. So a couple last little things real quick. So update message, right? This is where we say like, you know, thanks for providing feedback. All right, because we want the button to do something when people get click on it and should it update the card? Yes, it should. So those two little changes, say test, save and test. So what we should see now is when I click a yes or a no button, we'll click the no button now just, uh, just for a little fun. So that triggers, I should get a little notification in the bottom corner, there it is. And so then now do you approve spending? And we say no. There you go. Thanks for providing feedback responded by you. So we were able to give them the feedback so I don't have that yes and no button up here like we kept leaving before, which was really annoying. And over here, Ferguson sees you asked for $1,000 and Shane said no. So, whoa, how exciting is that, guys? You know, there is so much more you can do here. But, you know, now that you've learned how to post an adaptive card to a team user and wait for a response, you can post to a channel, you can post, you know, messages. We replied to a message here. You have all of these crazy things in here. So go play with them because I've given you the mechanics of how to go and click and do. And that's what this was all about, right? Was getting you those integration points. So next week we can make a really complex adaptive card. And we're also going to incorporate to do next week, right? So next week, you want to see what we're going to do? because I got more excited about that demo than this demo. So add a to-do. And so what we're going to do, this is for Nicola. She actually uh, wants this like for her normal workflow because she gets Teams messages and she has a hard time. There's no easy way to flag messages like there is in her email box. So what we're going to do is we're going to give her the ability to select a message and then uh, we're going to have the title. So she's going to put a title of what shows up in to-do. She can set a due date, a reminder time. We're going to post the whole message. We're going to post a link back to the message. It'll be so much fun, but that's next week because we're already like 40 minutes into this one. Sorry again. All right. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, leave me notes below, right? This is, this is a whole new exciting world, but I think people are really enjoying starting to wrap their heads around it. Last week's Power Apps video was one of my fastest growing videos ever, like ever, ever in all the years I've been doing this. So that was really cool to see how excited people were for that. So we're going to follow up with this one. And then we're going to do two or three more in this series. I think that this is, you know, kind of something that's at the, a lot of our hearts right now because a lot of us are realizing we're transitioning from an email-based world to a Teams-based world. And so the fact that we can do this automation is pretty darn cool. All right. Um, as always, if you need anything, leave me comments. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, you know, or you can, if you want to work together, powerapps911.com. We've got a whole bunch of training videos. So if you like listening to me talk for hours on end, Go over to training.powerapps911.com. And with that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and, you know, enjoy that. All right. Thanks and have a great day.